Yeah, he's actually breaking the law now. Nuisance streamers. Uh, Logan Paul. Johnny Somali. Phidias, who, by the way, his name makes him sound like a character from Harry Potter. Foreigner <laughs> equals nuisance. Go, what do you do? And you say YouTube, and they're like, oh. Hey, podcast kittens, it's Kathy Cat. Ah, Lady Beard coming at you with another ladle painting installment of Cat, Cat with Beard. Beard. We've got a. Um, popular slash unpopular topic to talk about today. Oh yeah, it's popular and a very unpopular topic that has already been covered quite a lot and we decided, we thought about it for a while and talked about it for a while and we will probably talk about it now too. Uh, We've mentioned it before but now it gets its whole own episode. Yeah, we've had controversial topics on this podcast and this is another controversial Mm. topic. Today we're talking about distasteful streamers in Japan. Yes, and there has been a term that has been coined which is called nuisance streamers. Do not, do not, do not call them prankster streamers because that just makes it sound fun because some people do think it's fun. Nuisance streamers are literally what the Japanese public is not impressed by. And unfortunately, a lot of people have seen nuisance streamers, tried to copy nuisance streamers, and it's made a lot of people's lives worse. Yeah, it's, it's hey, it's, they're not making it easier to be a foreigner in Japan. Japan is generally a country if one person spoil something it's that person will spoil it for everyone everyone and that's where a lot of rules are suddenly bam put into place because maybe one person does something they shouldn't have done and then it's it comes for everyone mm-hmm. it's unfortunately. like when the teacher punishes the entire class because no one will own up to the thing something like that so if there's something happens it means something you know the people will be very quick to change the rules and make things less fun or that's why you sometimes when you go certain places the list of like if you do this you can't if you do this which means that probably happened once one person might have said one or done one thing and then everyone gets the stick so Mm. we're talking about now in recent times there really has been a new wave of um uh, uh, morons, morons plus creators. internet. Yeah, morons on the internet who have arrived at Japan. Mm. So we're going to go through all of them. There was, of course, we must uh, remember where it began. Yeah. The OG of being disruptive in Japan with a camera, Logan Paul. That was a big issue when that happened. Every Japanese person knew it. Mm. Every Japanese person was talking about it. Mm. And also the problem was it really put a damper on the image of foreigners in mm. Japan as well mm. because he went into uh, Agokikahara? Aokigahara Jukai. That one. Mm. And he made a video about it. Like, oh my god, I checked that out. Like, very disrespectful to the families. Japanese people were really talking about it. Mm. Like, it's actually a tragedy and he turned it into his content. What's content? Um, Which... I don't even, I, I I have no words for that. But also he was doing some other, you know, questionable activities in Japan. He had videos of him running around with a Pokemon ball. He just ran up to a Japanese person to throw the Pokemon ball at him and this kind of thing. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of mm, douchey foreign activities. Kind of stuff. I mean, like the, the OG before Logan Paul of doing weird things in Japan would probably be that TV show called Jackass. Oh, do they come to they, Japan? They they came to Japan and did some content did there. They? Yeah, it's that. very controversial. Um, what they do here? Some things were obviously hilarious. Some things were a nuisance. Uh, they did a lot of different things. I the parts I've seen were not. What do they do? I here? mean, I guess when you watch it from a Western perspective, you think it's funny. But if you know Japanese culture, yeah. and that's maybe what you'll figure out during the course of this podcast once you know japanese culture you're like oh actually that's really bad yeah as you get more and more sensitive to the culture you do start to feel these things much more don't you so for example uh, in the jackass one that i think i still remember is a very long time that i watched it but it was this guy who went into an electronic store oh. and he would like ask them to like play some music on some sort of device and whenever the music started playing the guy would just randomly undress <laughs> and like start dancing to the music that i like is funny but then if you think about probably the staff member who had to deal with that and then did they actually ask for an okay of that person's face to be on camera, yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. There was another one that was kind of cute is where they were trying to check with every, if whenever they bow, does the other person bow back? Oh, and right. it was like a bow, bow counter the that bow. they had going on. But again, they were exploiting someone else's culture <laughs> yeah. for the sake of content. Yeah. I'm not sure if they got an okay for that. Uh-huh. But, you know, I do understand why some of these things are seen as funny, but you also have to always think of that one person mm. who's very much in the culture and they can't sometimes speak up for themselves. Mm. If you work in an like, electronic store 
Some people can't stand up for themselves. They're not allowed to say mean things back. They're not allowed to fight back. They're not allowed to say, excuse me, sir. Yeah, they're not. Lots of people are not allowed to fight back. And it's almost exploiting that cultural aspect of Japanese culture. Mm -hmm. So those were like the OG ones that we're starting with. So that was, but they were both a good jackass would have been 20 years ago. Logan was like 10 years ago. Mm. A long time ago now. So of course, since then, of course, the technology has developed remarkably and now everybody's influencing and streaming. Mm. So a whole new generation appears, especially post Penini when the yen is mm. super weak and uh, the tourists are flooding in. Mm-hmm. Let's have a conversation. So number uh, one, we we're start? covering today. Uh, take it away, Cat. Cat. Uh, do we start with the Phidias? Oh, we do start with the Phidias. Phidias, who, by the way, his name makes him sound like a character from Harry Potter. Oh. It's all Phidias first hair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm, watch out. Watch out, Hufflepuff. Um, so Phidias is this fellow from uh, Cyprus. Cyprus. Uh-huh. Um, and he, he became famous with the video which he called I Travel Japan, Across Japan for Free, uh-huh. which wasn't quite for free. It uh-huh. was just cheating your way through the system. Yeah, he stole, basically. So this gentleman, streamer or YouTuber, which one? Streamer? Streamer, uh, probably also YouTuber. Okay. Probably both. So. Uh, doing those things. So he's streaming. He comes into Japan. He's like, watch me travel from one end of the country to the other. Gets on the Shinkansen, the bullet train. And, and he's like, in the toilet. watch me not pay for a ticket. He hides in the he, toilet. He, and he streamed that. So mm. you have proof that he did that, yeah, which exactly. you're not. First of all, you have to think about that. Like, I I didn't watch it on purpose to not give it another view. But how? You have to first go through the first barrier. Then you have to go through the second mm. barrier. Mm. Mm. And then you go for the actual train barriers. He went for a lot of barriers. Mm. So he must have been jumping over them or. I guess so. He did quite well to hit that jump without security seeing him and saying, hey, you. Mm. Mind you, I don't know. Security in Japan, it's always an an older gentleman who doesn't seem particularly threatening. So maybe he just said, hey, what's that? And just hopped over. And To be honest, I was on the Shinkansen after that became a thing. It wasn't that there were two security people once going around. Maybe there was something else happening during that time, but there were very able-bodied two security people going. Oh, yeah. Not sure if that's his fault or that was just a situation that happened during that time. But the thing is he was hiding in the loo um, and when they found him, they were like, can you come out? Mm. And he pretended to be sick and then ran past the person and then went onto another train. Yeah. Um, Which already it's very sus. You might be able to do that on subways or trains in your country. In Japan, you don't do that. Yeah. Please don't. But then also he was then, um, what happened with this begging situation? He begged a stranger for a bus fare. But then the fare was 80. He said he was 80 yen short of the actual fare. Well, sorry, no, I'm sorry. And the bus driver tried to stop him from leaving. Yeah, sorry, he paid too little. He begged a stranger for his bus fare. Then it paid too little for his bus fare, tried to sneak out, and the bus driver's like, I don't think so. Mm, And then he was taken to the police to be questioned for five hours. It's not like if it wasn't an honest mistake, I think people would help you in Mm, Japan. If it was an honest mistake and you apologize, I think you're okay. Mm. But that was clearly, again, for the sake of clicks and views, trying to cheat the system. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, the wonderful thing is in Japan, if you're really in trouble, there's always some sort of way out and people are actually nice. But once you start abusing that for like lols and wow, clicks, very bad. people won't do that anymore. And especially now, everyone's wise to it and mm. everyone's sick of it. So mm. they really will have no mercy. And again, the problem is um, that case will be displayed on all the news in Japan. And then it's not videos. Mm. It is. Looking like it's every foreigner who streams. Kathy Cat and Lady Beard who's causing these It's everyone. And that's the problem. Like, everyone's like, ah, you know, this this doesn't really affect you, does it? It does, unfortunately, affect a lot of people because a lot of Japanese people don't have foreigner friends. They don't have foreigner acquaintances. They don't work with foreigners. So if they see that on TV, broadcast it weeks and weeks after weeks, it can kind of you know, change foreigner, your opinion. Foreigner equals nuisance. So that, that's, an, unfortunately, some people eat exactly the news that they get. And also the news companies are going to roll with it because it's going to oh, get yeah. so much attention and controversy. So they're like, woohoo! You and know? it's good because then again, it pushes the traditional news of TV mm-hmm. going like, oh, all the streaming, all that internet stuff, everything good sucks. Point, good point. Sometimes alongside of uh, like local poll and similar, they would then 
shout out also Japanese news and streamers and mm. say like, hey, someone lie down in a in a ice cream box or like oh, right, random really. things that also young Japanese people would do for clicks. And then it kind of pulled down also the image of everyone who's streaming and those mm. YouTubers. So a lot of, for one time when I was um, in YouTube and that kind of became a thing, especially local poll thing, a lot of companies did not want to work with any YouTubers. Really? Because the image of all the YouTubers in Japan massively dropped because of Logan Paul and other nuisance Japanese. Mm. Because it's the moment you say to older people, you're a YouTuber, a lot of people's faces will drop. Really? They'll be like, oh. Uh, you're one of those. Yeah. Uh. Kind of. And that's that's the kind of news that they have seen and consumed. I so <laughs> I've had that reaction before. And I'm like, oh, what do you do? And you say YouTube. And they're like, uh. oh. Like, unfortunately, that was a thing now. Again, a lot of good Japanese content creators have brought that image up again, like oh. Hikakin, who's like just generally a lot a in media. Person, yeah, yeah, he's a right. famous person. But some older, especially people in the older generation who do not watch internet media, mm. their opinions are formed in a certain way by what they've seen of the nuisance content creators. Mm. So yeah. Um, Phidias, after that, he also snuck into a hotel and <laughs> stole a free breakfast, pretending to be a guest of the hotel and then just snuck out without paying. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, he said on camera, okay, I got to leave the hotel without getting caught, without any problems. So Just like promoting that is not good because that yeah. will then give other people the thing of going like, oh, maybe let me try that because there's a lot of young and prudential people who just go, oh, cool, free breakfast, yeah, let's well, try. Yes, yeah, is, I mean, I guess this is just this generation's version of oh, being kind of rebellious mom and dad bleh, be a public nuisance like this generation's equivalent of you know spray painting your tag on some public wall or something right i think it also is a very great um comparison of western culture where you might get away with things and it feels like a slight small thing in japanese cultures where people have a lot of rules and those small things are actually a lot bigger than you think they yeah. are in this culture yeah so, you know, you go like, oh, so what? This or that. No, it will change the culture here. So already a lot of Japanese companies or like a lot of Japanese places have changed some rules. We want to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. So, but he also got voted now into the European Parliament. So I'm not quite <laughs> sure. June 2024, Phidias got voted onto YouTube. And they yeah, call him so. a YouTube prankster, like making it sound uh, cute. Ah, I see. That's, it's not breaking the law. It's not cute. But it's can not you, funny. Hang on. So he's in the European Parliament. Do we know what position he has in the European Parliament? Uh, he, he got, he secured himself one seat. Uh, and one of the things he said he wanted to do, focus on education, eliminating exams and promoting self-education. Oh uh, dear. Okay. So self-education, right. so whatever that means. My question, I guess he's, I guess he's not a diplomat, which is good, but can you imagine the moment when he has to have a meeting with the, uh, you know, the Japanese foreign minister or something? That's going to be a problem, huh? It's going to be awkward. Very awkward indeed. All right. Another name that everyone knows by now on the internet, the American known as Johnny Somali. Oh, Johnny Somali. That's Everyone's famous favorite case. person. This famous case. Famous case. This guy. I couldn't believe when I saw this. I was mm, like, wow. It wasn't just one or two things. It was just a, a continuous stream of just being horrible to Japan, which hurt Japanese people emotionally. Uh, it hurt Westerners living here, it hurt tourists, and in the end it hurt all of us because of some of the consequences that it brought. Yeah, I don't really, I don't want to repeat the things he said because it's they're so offensive. It's always horrible. Like, he's obviously one of those streamers that got probably not okayed on a lot of platforms because he was streaming on Kick, mm. which is already like known for like their rules are a lot looser than other platforms would be. So, um, it's a, he just offended people. He was horrible to people. He was horrible to women, horrible to old people, horrible to people just around him. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because that was actually one of the few first times where Japanese young people would actually stand up and do something. Yeah, this dude got punched many a time. Yeah, by Westerners living in Japan, mm. by Japanese people. That is rare. Mm. You don't really see Japanese people get, like, again, we're talking about that staff person who can't speak up for themselves. Mm. You don't see people actually being so upset that they've felt to do something about it. So one of the interesting things about Japan, one of the interesting social dynamics is tense situations will seem to escalate from zero to 100 in one step because everyone 
is so patient about things. Mm. So they'll just, they'll keep it compressed, keep it compressed, keep it compressed. But then if, if, you know, the gas, the lid comes off the gas cooker, it's just boo. Mm. And that's how it goes. So yeah. So in that video of him on the train, mm. uh, when he's talking about, he made a lot of disparaging comments about um, uh, the atomic bomb, which is probably the worst thing you could possibly <sighs> do in Japan. The most offensive thing. So, but you see the video cause he's streaming as Japanese people sitting there and you see them and they're sitting there quietly and you can see that on the inside, they're just containing such rage. Mm. And again, it's not, we're angry at Johnny Somali. We're angry at that foreigner, which means there might be others like that. And mm. maybe he was streaming with friends and there's other people that were also then, you know, trying to do silly things mm. in Japan. And it just has festered very negative emotions towards streamers. And to be honest, it's a um, lot of places after that started having signs up, no streaming. Oh, did they? A lot of places. If oh. you now look around Tokyo, there's a lot more no streaming signs. If you go to a cute pig cafe, you want to film the pig if you can. Sure. But here's a lot of rules of no streaming at all anymore. Sometimes you're allowed to take pictures, but no streaming. So that's being become a big rule in a lot of places. And also another thing is on Japanese TV, you sometimes can't, if you're not like, officially already a criminal, you sometimes can't show people's faces. Mm. So instead of showing that person's face and mm. name, they would say a foreign streamer. Mm. But then you don't, you can't distinguish anymore. So you think, oh, is it now three foreign streamers have done that? Because mm. you've done so many things. So <laughs> a lot of people in their heads, because we don't really sometimes pay that close attention for them. It's just like them, many foreign streamers mm. who them all call many, many I issues. Mm. So instead of becoming one person again, that one person became many people uh, in in the thoughts of a lot of people. So uh, again, making that a, a point against everyone who wants to stream now in uh, Japan, uh, that kind of thing. Of course, streaming can be annoying generally because there's always someone walking around with a uh, camera, but it was just the level of offense that happened in the streams that just people are like, get out. There, but there is something, isn't there? Like once you've spent a lot of time in Japan and you get kind of sensitized to the culture, mm. there is something that you can't really put into words to get outsiders to really grasp just how offensive they're being, isn't mm. there? There's a certain feeling, you know? I think that what shocked me when I first came to Japan, I was, uh, it, I was got interviewed at the station uh, for like being in a TV thing. Anyway, so people followed me around and filmed me in Harajuku. And it was interesting. People saw it's an official camera, not a video camera, official camera. And people were all judging. People were trying to avoid mm. the camera. People were covering their face. And I'm like, oh, things are different here. And then I started YouTubing here 10 years ago. And I realized people are very, very protective of their privacy. Mm. People don't want to be in the background of YouTube videos people don't want to be in the back of your streams if they like purposely avoiding you if you can't like avoid having them in it like i'm obviously now more and more people are doing it it's hard to cut them out but for example when i started streaming i started blurring out people's faces left right and center mm -hmm. because i was like oh my god how am i going to do this and i realized it's very very difficult to do that at the same time but japanese people prefer their privacy and in a lot of restaurants and such if you go to them people will actually say you can take pictures of the food but not nothing else so almost like made cafe so mm. again um tosatsu Taking pictures and videos of other people without permission is always difficult. So if you're then also on top of that being rude and horrible to them, you're adding injury to offense. There's been generally a lot of streamers will be in like Shibuya Center guy. Mm. Only one of those conven convenience stores already called the content creator convenience store because they all just like mm. hang around the same convenience store. Um, brings us then over to Shibuya Halloween and how that kind of like rambunctious behavior has changed Shibuya. Mm. We first had Shibuya Halloween Halloween getting, well, in a way banned because they said no alcohol, no assembling, no standing around here in Shibuya because people got too rambunctious trying to, you know, take their videos and then get drunk, start and fights, that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of foreigners who were also involved in those, not mm. just Japanese people, but also foreigners. And again, left bad taste. And now that a lot of tourists are coming, flooding the area, we're also having now a new rule in Shibuya, which says no alcohol at all mm -hmm. in Shibuya <laughs> outside. You can still go into restaurants and bars and stuff and drink there, but you can't do it outside. So if you see a streamer with a can of something to drink in the center of Shibuya, he's 
is actually breaking the law now. Mm. But it's not enforced yet as they're still making that law. So just be a little bit careful about that. Yeah, what a shame. I think the um, problem is I think that a lot of people who come right now they either purposefully disrespect the rules like the ones we talked about or they're people who just came here without doing a little bit of research in the culture and just being blank out rude, such mm-hmm. as they was a streamer called Katrin Garat, I think. Mm. Uh, beautiful lady, but she decided to get even more beautiful in a cafe mm. with like a makeup artist and lots and lots of palettes of colors <laughs> and she getting a whole styling and makeover in a cafe. Now... Western perspective is, why not? Mm. Japanese perspective is, ew. Mm, Japanese perspective is, I'll tell you why not. You got to get your makeup spread out here and everything. Getting your powder all over the place. It's getting your unhy- bodily yeah. thingamajigs all spread around the place here and there and everywhere. There's two, two things in there, I think, aren't there? One is the unhygienic part of it, mm. because food and makeup should not be put mm-hmm, together. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Fake up. Japanese people are very cleansy, yeah, cleanly yeah, very, in the first place. Yeah. So they're like, makeup and food, you shouldn't put that together. Mm. Eep, my food will taste different now because of the smell of the perfu- mm. perfume. Some people will even say they don't like it if they go to a sushi place, if the partner has too strong perfume. So already, oh, really? yeah, there's a lot of like, oh. you know, food and just cleanliness in Japan that's valued a lot higher. And then number two is that actually it is said it's also a bit rude to put your makeup up in front of other people. Mm, You should be doing that at home Mm. and then leave. There was like a whole debate about women putting on their makeup on the train. Mm. Like a lot of elderly people were very upset about young Mm. women putting on their makeup on the train. I again understood it because I'm like, well, they're just so busy. They're barely getting any sleep. They want to, you know, put on a little bit of makeup on the train. I thought it was fine. But again, the piece next to them maybe gets a little bit of that powder, a little bit of whiff of that coloring. Mm. And you, after a while, you understand, okay, you're not supposed to bother someone else. I saw um, uh, in my previous company, one of my co-workers was yelled at by an old man on the train because she took out her analog flip phone. Mm-hmm. And this old man was saying, I have a pacemaker. You can't use that on the train because it's going to upset my pacemaker. Mm-hmm. The train is a very sensitive place in Japan. In Japan, it? the train is a super sensitive place. Uh, Comment just quickly back to Katrin. Yeah. The problem was not just that you put on her makeup, the full makeup there, which again, everyone around was, ew, gross. And then the staff asked her, could you please not do mm-hmm. that? And then she complained about yeah. that. I think if she at that point had gone, wow, sorry, didn't know, it wouldn't have caused a problem yeah. and Japanese people wouldn't still be talking talking about it Mm. it's the how dare (laughs) part of it it's Mm. like you can't go how dare is a not your cafe b you didn't book it and no Mm. well c you didn't get permission and d you complain after they told you please don't Mm. if you want to put on your makeup somewhere get permission some of these some of these ones you can look at them and you can say oh it's not that bad is it but then yeah you can look at it from a japanese perspective you can say oh it's very disturbing yeah if you want to put on your entire makeup somewhere and like have that all over the place find out where you can Mm. do that i'm sure there is a place you can do that and if you are an influence of a certain amount of numbers you can also afford that Uh, who else we got uh, there was another influencer I'm not sure if I'm saying the name right probably not Uh, So Ping the Japanese people got upset about him he would like go to different places and lie on the floor and like Mm. do the cycling man kind of thing in different places again um, on famous places just to get on camera and get like reels out of it and he also did it on the Japanese train again you look at it and from a western perspective you think it's funny it doesn't seem that bad to me all he did was lie down, do his thing, shoot like a video, a cycle get up thing, again. Having that didn't his seem that bad in the to ear. Me. But then from a Japanese perspective, it's like, why are you doing this? Mm. Like, why are you doing this on our train? Again, I think it's the train is always the problem. Yeah, the like, train's a sensitive place. The train is a very sensitive place in Japan. It's not like you know, in, in Berlin, where like one person plays the guitar, another person asks you for like some money, mm. and then another person keeps talking really loud on the phone. The train in Japan is like where everyone is stressed. Yeah. <laughs> the level of yeah. stress yeah. on the Japanese train is so high because everyone just wants to A to B, and everyone already wants to scream because yeah. they're they're so stressed and a lack of sleep and lots of work, and they're just trying to keep it in for that amount of time they're on the train packed in boiling hot with all these other people and you're just praying for this ride to be over asap and then you have someone who's taken the mickey so in that slow and you go like oh 
that's why people get upset about it. That's why Japanese people talk about it. Another um, ma- a nuisance person um, that uh, has been talked about here in Japan is an artist who's pretty much like dressed as a very scary puppet. Mm. Slightly suggestive, slightly scary, kind of pinkish, but kind of horrible. They call themselves Enormous Face as an artist. Mm. Um that upset the public too because they would just be again first on the train making like really very weird scary sounds mm. while they would walk through the, again using Japan as a platform for content mm. not getting not getting them permissions and also then in the station walking around doing like uh, blah, blah, yeah doing uh, like visceral vomit noises um and again on in the train like it's literally just trying to get reactions out of Japanese people who don't want to be in your video. <laughs> can I can I ask a question though? Enormous Face, is Enormous Face an artist or is it about the content? Because like this kind of thing, this kind of public art, we've actually had that for a long time before the streaming and whatnot came about. You know, Dadaism was an art movement when this kind of thing would happen, you know? So these public displays of art, I do appreciate the fact that Enormous Face's giant pink puppet was kind of frightening, especially for children. So that would really cause a problem. Um, But that seemed to me more like a display of public art. And it was more like one of those art in the real world kind of things, as opposed to content oriented. Do we have, she already has something to say. I would, um, can I quickly add one thing? I think if you just stood somewhere on a street corner and did that as art, I think it would be perceived differently than doing it on a crowded train. Again, in fa- in people's faces, no permission on train usually can't, you shouldn't do that either. And then also inside a train station, trying to upset people and shock them, surprise them kind of thing. There's a huge, uh, I think like a conceptual gap between Japanese people and foreigners regarding public art because public art is not a thing here. Oh, I see. Mm. Well, there okay, now here we are. So look at this public mm. artist. Pay attention. So, uh, for example, graffiti on the wall is illegal here. Mm-hmm. So you shouldn't do that. Even uh, the that famous graffiti artist, if he does it in Japan, then that's illegal. Banksy. Mm-hmm. Banksy, yes. I think. Right. Graffiti is illegal everywhere. I think that's why the kids do it because they're like, yeah, rebellion. Bleh. Um, but Japan has graffiti artists, so there must be specific walls or private property or something where they do their art. Yeah. Yes. If you get a permission from the owner of yeah. the property, then you can do it. I see. Like you, everything you do or in public, even if it is like a protest or not, you have to get a permission from the land owner or from like uh, the mayor of the city or whoever is in charge of that area, you have to get a permission or, and, or otherwise it cannot be happened. That's the thing actually that I learned a lot doing YouTube in Japan is that you have to get a lot more permission here for things you didn't even think you needed permission for. Like for example, some parks, you have to have permission to film in. Some areas you have to have permission to film in. Of course you can go in there and you film by yourself. So for example, you would need in theory a permission for your Yogi Park, but no one knows that and everyone does their content there. In theory though, the overall rule is you need a permission. So if you get caught out at it, you might be in trouble. Same thing with a lot of areas is you need so much permission. That's why a lot of videos I wanted to do couldn't happen because sometimes we didn't get permission and it's, it's great if you have a wonderful idea but if you don't get the permission for it you just need to drop it and do something else i mean that's the same you know same in the western world if you're going to shoot anywhere you need a shooting permit to get things done normally can i raise something i hereby acknowledge what is arguably an inherent hypocrisy in everything that i'm saying in this video because when i came to japan 10 years ago how i initially got famous on the internet was by taking photos and whatnot in public a lot of the time. I have my studio photos too, but we would go to Harajuku, me and Seda Fukuoji-san, and those photos went viral and whatnot. Mm. And um, we have various other photos in Shinjuku and Shibuya and other public places. The crossing, I've got my photo in the middle of the crossing as well. So therefore, I can acknowledge that I did all this and it made me famous. And now I'm criticizing a bunch of kids 10 years later who are doing the same thing in a different form. Mm. So I, I just acknowledge 
my inherent hypocrisy with this, if you want to interpret it that way. Okay, good good point, actually, I guess, like when I was creating content all right on the streets and stuff, we, we tried to be careful as much as we could, but we would also probably create content in an area without knowing that we weren't maybe supposed to take pictures there. The point is that once you know, then you can change it then you can become more careful mm. once you actually work with that. Another thing is, so for example, the street snap or not, if you cannot find out who exactly he or she is in the photo, that's okay. The if street snap? Oh, photo street on the street. Snap, like mm. photos on the street. So if they are too far away, like far, away, far enough that we cannot tell who that is, then it's just the background, so it's okay. But then you know, there's a um, criteria that the Japanese government actually issued in terms of like filming like documentary or news like videos or not in the public area, there's a criteria that you can refer to. So they they are they have some points and regulations. Like number one, if is this a public place or private area or not? Yes or no. And then the two is the person in question is close enough to the camera so that anyone can see who that person is yes or no that kind of criteria we have that so uh, but it's not something that we study it's just something that we feel mm. as a japanese people so i think it's going to be different from the foreign people's perspective if mm. we see it i think it's the word tosatsu like to take pictures without permission brings us back to that um if you go up to someone and say hey can i take your picture mm. and they're like sure and you take a picture that is fine um if you go up to someone and say, hey, can I take your picture? And they're like, no. And you still take a picture. That's not fine. Mm, that's <laughs> that's as simple as that is. And, you know, you need to ask people. It needs to be okay. It needs to be consensual. 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 <laughs> that's a word for it. So generally, permission and consensual are very, very important in Japan because you don't want to upset someone. It's the thing, like, going back to the start of this episode, our mate Logan Paul, like, looking at that, I think... I don't think he was intentionally going out of his way to offend anyone. I think he just didn't think very hard about it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But then with Somali, clearly he's just attempted to be as offensive as he possibly can be. Like, yeah, there's, no excuse, there's you know? a there's a negative intent there, and I think that probably sets it apart. If you accidentally took a picture somewhere where you weren't supposed to take a picture or a video, that's one thing. But if you actually took a picture purposely trying to upset someone then that's a problem. I think there's been a lot of times, for example, when I took street interviews in Japan, we filmed an entire street interview mm. and we're like, cool, we got that in the bag. And then the person turns around and says, actually changed my mind. Don't want to be in your interview. And then we have to be the bigger person go like, sorry, okay, we'll delete the whole thing. We'll stay here for another couple of hours then mm. and try to find someone else. Because if someone doesn't want to be in your picture, in your video, it's their right to say no. Can I point something out else out as well? We've been commenting this whole time on um, uh, these incidents and uh, with a somewhat disapproving tone a lot of the time. Can I just point out how much free publicity we have just given every single one of these people? Yeah. <laughs> and we're not going to be the only that. ones, are oh we? Oh my God. This is why they're doing it. We are part of the problem. We this are part of the problem it. as well. I think it's just, it upsets so many people here in Japan because I, I think it's always because we feel like we're getting judged on what other people did. I think that's why it upsets a lot of foreigners living in Japan yeah. because they're like, oh, great. Now everyone's going to think I'm like I'm that. I'm Somali. Yeah. Everyone is going to think like I'm like that. And that's because, again, a lot of Japanese people don't have that connection to foreigners. They don't mm. think, oh, it's just another, you know, <laughs> silly YouTuber. They think, oh, it's another... Some people might think oh, it's another foreigner, which is very unfortunate because mm. we're trying our best here. We're trying our best to follow the rules and do everything right. But it's a lot of in these cases where one person ruins it for everyone. And that is probably why so many of the other people commenting on it are so upset about it because they're like, come on, can you like not, <laughs> please? Foreigner, <laughs> this world will now be referred to as the F word. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Generally, if you are a streamer or a content creator and you're coming to Japan, there's a couple of very simple things you can do or follow to not become a nuisance streamer. 
Generally is don't film in places where they don't want you to film. Mm. Next one is maybe ask for permission. I did that recently in one of my streams. I'm like, hey, sorry. Like I've tried to cover the camera as much. It has to be like, you know, at least try. Go like, hey, can I film in your place? And like, sure, come on in. Found a spot where I don't have them like in there and just started to have some green tea. Loved it. Promoted their place saying, hey, that's, this mm. place is great. Tastes fantastic. For them, it was fun. For me, it was fun. Thumbs up all around. So that's like a positive experience. You can't always do things right. Sometimes you will be somewhere and you think it's okay to film. And then they go like, Psh, can you please go again? If they tell you to go, then go say sorry and go. Because again, Japan is not your content creation playground. You still have to follow the rules. If they say no, leave. Right. And sometimes this all, you know, we've been talking about foreigners this whole time, but sometimes this happens with the Japanese as well. Going back super old school. Do you remember there used to be those rockabilly dancers out the front of Yoyogi Park? They're still there. Yeah. I thought they eventually got moved on and they're not allowed to be there anymore. I, I think they're still there, um, but they're, they are like old school rockabillies. They will dance in front of Yoyogi Park, but oh, do not take a video or a picture yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, they will like get that. angry. And don't. Join their dance going like, hey, 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 hey. Oh, no, 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 no. they take no, it no. very seriously. That's their spot. Yeah. That's their, again, it's not your spot. It's their spot. Anyway, we're all visitors and we got to act accordingly. Again, try not, if you're trying to create content in Japan, it's so it's easy to just say and ask for permission. Can I film? Can I take a picture? Can I stream here? Those words already make a change. At least the intention of asking. You can't always do everything right if it's right in the moment and you're there and someone walks in behind you or something. You can't change that. But at least try to do the right thing and you should be fine. Should we wrap this bad boy up? Let's wrap it up. We have more to talk about about nuisance tourists right now that also have changed a couple of rules in Japan. And that's going to be in our next episode of Cat, Cat with Beard. Try to be a good human and be nice. Mm, stream well. <laughs>